Don Juan, in his training, in his early training, Don Juan Matus, in his earliest training, had to dress as a woman for two years and disguise himself as a woman and never, ever be found out. If he was ever found out, he had to start the two years over. Just to prove that he had the capacity to disguise himself. Just to have that energy of being able to be male or female. To know that that's not something that's separate from you, but that you have that. This ability to have someone come at you that you don't want to see you and to make yourself invisible to them through the use of your energy body. These are all things that we think, oh, come on, we can't do that. Where are you coming off with that stuff? You're cookie thieves. Because you're stuck in believing there's only one dimension of reality and it is the reality that your senses process and perceive. And you don't understand yet that there are other dimensions of reality and you can at least peer into them. And if you want to do more than just peer into them, you can wander into them. Your life here is like being in one room in a house that has a thousand rooms. And you show up in this one room called daily awareness. And you live in this room you're open, the door opens at your conception and it closes at your death. And you live in this room and you try to figure out a way into the other 999 rooms that constitute potential human awareness. But you can't get in them because you're always pushing and pushing and pushing on the walls and looking for an exit out of this dimension that's out there. Somehow this pushing process doesn't work and you just keep pushing against these walls. And then you have the insight the awareness, and you step back, and finally, finally, finally you realize that the doorway out of the limitations of daily awareness opens inward. You step back, and you allow the door to open, and you walk right through. And as you walk through, you begin to see the ability to manifest the ability to manage the coincidences of your life, the ability to place your attention on prosperity, on healing, on unconditional love, on kindness, on divine relationships. And you see that energy not just as something that is static and stagnant, but as something that is alive and flowing and moving and connecting everything to everything. It is said that when a butterfly just moves its wings off the coast of the United States, it flutters the breezes and the leaves on the islands of Japan. The connection is that subtle. There is nothing that separates you from that divine source except your belief that you are separate from it. And the affirmation for this is, I express the energy of unconditional love to all people and all things in my life. Connect to your divinity with unconditional love. The emphasis is on the un. There are no conditions. That the force that we're speaking about here in this program is the force of love. Another word for God is love. Another word for this divine energy, this universal intelligence, is love. Love is the glue that holds everything together. It's the energy within every cell that allows it to stay in place. If you take an electron microscope and you artificially begin to manipulate the electrons inside of an atom, and you align a certain number of them, when you reach a certain critical mass number, one-third, one-tenth, whatever that number might be, all of a sudden, all the rest of those electrons within that atom automatically align. They just line up with each other. That force, when you reach a critical mass within an electron, within a subatomic particle, within a molecule, within an atom, within each and every one of us, is this force that 
Pierre Teilhard de Chardin of Chardin said is the glue that holds everything together in the universe. And being able to do your manifesting requires this kind of commitment to this. I think the most beautiful passage in the entire New Testament is Corinthians 13. I'd like to share it with you. It's something that I read every day. I use it in my talks most of the time. And it really is reflective of how important this principle is. It says these words, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and I can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. It seemed to me, as I was writing Manifest Your Destiny and as I was preparing myself for this program, that it would be impossible to not include the necessity of experiencing unconditional love even if you just did it for a day, in order to be able to understand its relationship to manifesting. 